name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the blessings of God rest upon every one of us as we gather here this morning to worship the Lord. I want to specially welcome Mama Nancy. Thank you for coming this morning. She has been here, she has not been here since the beginning of her, uh, or during COVID, but I met a, a steward yesterday and he told me that Mama will be coming this morning. We are full of joy and we thank God that you are, you are here. This, and those that are worshiping with us for the first time also, and those that are worshiping with us again and again, my friend, Onta, you are welcome. Thank you for being here this morning. We miss you and would like to continue to see you. You are all welcome. As we start this service this morning, please sing with the choir as we sing old somebody. Tell them that you love them. That's not good? You like that? Okay, we'll sing one of that. Be prepared. Once again, I want to welcome everyone that are worshiping with us for the first time and those that are worshiping with us again and again. We appreciate you. Let us quickly listen to some of our announcements. We have some donations this morning in memory of Julian Coverhill by Doug and Mark Arnold, and also to the General Fund in memory of Gil Stukuli, and also the General Fund in memory of Boss Stewart and Janet Harrison, and also to the Keck Church Fund in loving memory of Lewis Montaigne by so many people. We appreciate all of you. Thank you for your love and for your donations. By the grace of God, this Tuesday, June 15, is our committee meetings. The committee meetings comes of 7 p.m. and the official board, 8 p.m. Our choir party is 10 a.m. in the morning. Please, during the week, we want to encourage our church families to please let us connect with one another. Just call one or two people, ask them how they are doing, and if there are any pastoral needs, please let the church know and we'll quickly do that. Our summer services, both July, August, will be held in this church. We are not, because of COVID protocol and some other things, we'll, all our services will be in this sanctuary. We are upgrading and improving our website. So please, if you have any photos of church events or anything that is related to the church, please, Kindly send it to the church office. Immediately we finish using it, we will send it back to you in charge. We want to promise you. So please, if you have any photos that is related to church event or to church family, maybe in this auditorium or outside, please let us send it to the church office. Yeah, by the grace of God, as from this month, June 15, we are partnering with the uh, and be provincial hall in using our Christian education hall. So please, 
this will not be disturbing all our services or any of our other arrangements, but we need to note this. They'll be, they'll be here during the weeks, not on Sunday. So it's a way to partner with the government, to partner with the town, and also to make use of what we have as a church. So we we'll, would we'll like us to note this. One of our mission and services to our community is to support the food bank. The food bank is presently expanding their tentacles. They are planning to buy a new house so that they'll be able to do more services to this community. Their services to this community is very, very important. I've, I was there sometimes ago. They are doing great work. I've introduced so many people there and they have also helped so many people. So every first Sunday of the month in this church is a food bank Sunday. So please let us be here to bring non-perishable items to the church so that we can donate as a church family to food bank. And if you want to donate any cash to food bank, please, we are open. You can take it there or you can bring it to the church. We'll uh, send it there directly. And at the end of the year, we are going to issue you a charitable cash receipt. They are doing great work over there. We have some uh, books or readings that are available in the upper room and our daily Bible reading for July and August are available. So please let us pick one and give one to somebody. By the grace of God, next Sunday we have some pack services. Number one, we are going to celebrate our fathers on that day. Wow. It's going to be wonderful. We are going to have a guest preacher. That I, I will not be preaching next Sunday. We are going to have a guest preacher that will be preaching to her. So prepare to come and receive from God. On that day also, it's going to be a day that we are going to celebrate all our graduates. Those that are graduating this year that are affiliated to our church. We want to bring them in. We want to encourage them so that they will come into the church and be part of our family. We need them. We have been doing youth with a purpose. Some of them have not been joining us. So we want to use that to encourage them. No matter where they are, it is by Zoom. They can do what? They can join us. So we'll be welcoming them next Sunday and to appreciate them and to tell them we do what? We love them. And next Sunday also is going to be communion service. It's three in one. We are appreciating our fathers. We are uh, celebrating our graduates, and we're also celebrating communion. So next Sunday, we want you to dress casual. Just dress casual. You may put on your shirt, your just dress, and come. And if by the grace of God we have, uh, yeah, we are planning some services outside, so that we just do some services outside, and after our service, we do barbecue, we do some other things, we, as a church together. So uh, just prepare yourself. During this summer, we are going to have some good time together, and we are praying, and we are hoping that uh, COVID will soon what? Will soon go. Will soon what? If you see me this morning, I'm, uh, I'm fully... been fully vaccinated. It's not that uh, vaccination is very good. It's a sign that we love our, our communities, we love our family, we love others. We have some also that have done that. So please, if you have not uh, taken maybe your first dose, please do that. It's a sign that you love what? You love your, you love your family, you love your friends. Oh my God, I want to appreciate Debbie, Angela, and Shelley. Last week, Sunday was very, very powerful. We did our Sunday school closing. Thank you for, our, for your services to this church. We appreciate you, thank you. And with that, any other announcement anywhere? The Lord is in this house.
his power is visible. We are here as his hands and feet. Let us come together as we worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. Children of God, do you love the God who hovered over the face of the deep and called the worlds into being? Yes. Then feed God's children. Children of God, do you love the God who was revealed in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Then take care of God's children. Children of God, do you love the God who breathed new life into us, even as we gather this day? Then fill God's children. Let us worship God. Let us pray together. Dear Jesus, you are the fount of every blessing, the source of all we have. We thank you for your abundance given freely to all. Forgive us for all, even when we have more than we need. Create in us new heart to love our neighbors as much as mo- that our abundance is for others' need as given to us by you. God's abundance is enough for all if we share. Amen. And our first aim is taken from Voices United, number 222. Come, let us sing. And please, you may stand as you are able. Seated. I want to invite Adebayo to lead us in uh, celebrations this morning. You can do it. Celebration. Can we have any time to celebrate this morning? Let's be church. <laughs> Please share your celebrations with us as we give thanks thanks together. Okay. It is celebrations time. If if there's anything that you want to celebrate with the church this morning, maybe your birthday. Okay. Wow. (laughs) She is celebrating nature this morning. The garden is coming forth. Yeah, thank you very much. Wow. 
wow, congratulations to David. Oh, congratulations. I think I'm hearing. Please come again. My God, 55? Happy birthday to her. Any other celebration? Oh, my wife just finished. Uh, a course at MBCC yesterday, <laughs> on Friday. I'm seeing Valerie this morning. Oh, my God. Thank you for coming. Valerie is a friend to girls, Chokuli, and I met her at the hospital so many times. Valerie, I want to tell you that you challenge my faith and I'm encouraged by your love and your support to Gil during our last days of our life. Thank you for joining us this morning. I would love to see more of you in our church. God bless you. Do we uh, uh, sing this morning? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. To you, everybody, happy birthday to you. Eep, eep, eep. I can't hear you. Eep, eep, eep. Eep, eep, eep. Let us prepare ourselves as we listen, read the word of God this morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Our responsive reading this morning is taken from Voices United, Psalm 138, and that is on page 860. All right, so you, you can, can stand and we will sing the Chorus there. Yes. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. of your mouth.
for though you are high, you care for the lowly. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me. You will fulfill your purpose for me. Good morning, everyone. I'm reading this morning from John's 21, verses 15 to 19. After they had eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? Yes, Lord, he answered. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he answered. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. A third time, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter became sad because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And so he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. I am telling you the truth. When you were young, you used to get ready and go anywhere you wanted to. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you up and take you where you don't want to go. In saying this, Jesus said, Jesus was indicating the way in which Peter would die and bring glory to God. Then Jesus said to him, follow me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Speak to us expressly from your word this morning. Holy Spirit, speak to us. May we hear you. May our ears be open. May our eyes see. May our heart perceive. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I will be starting some series this morning on still worship and continue this month, and in July, I will continue. The first series on stewardship this morning is titled, Show Me. Sometimes when we heard about stewardship, sometimes we think it's about money. What is stewardship is managing what God has given to us, maybe money, properties, it might be our own, it might be others, it might be so, but managing things goes beyond money. So, I'm going to expand on so many areas. Even how do we talk to God? How do we manage one another relationship? How do we manage our relationship with God? So, I'm going to expand on. I'm also going to talk about money. So, it's, it's, it's going to be broad. But let me start this morning that one of the Sundays I was in the church and somebody met me here and 
ask me, what about one of our church members who is in the hospital? The person told me the person is his neighbor. I was touched on that day because of the love is shown to that person. And to me, that is what? That is still worship. Because he's trying to manage what? The, that person's life, his relationship is showing. Even though that person doesn't know that this person is asking about another person. But right from his heart, you know that what? He loves what? That person. Show me. Before we go forward, what are we showing as a Christian? What do we need to show? And what is God calling us to do to show as a Christian? Let me start with a story of a farmer who on one warm summer night was sitting on the front porch with his wife. The couple had been together for over 40 years. On that particular night, the farmer began to think about how much he appreciated his partner. They had shared so much together. She had been caring, supportive, patient, and forgiving. Overcome with emotion, he turned to her and said, Wife, you have been such a wonderful partner. There are, there are times I can hardly keep from telling you. Love and gratitude are wonderful emotions, but particularly so when they are spoken, when we express them aloud. The praises, thank you. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you, and I love you, are very powerful. These words have the potential to grow our love and strengthen our relationship. This morning, I told my wife, you are looking good. Huh? I appreciate her. She can't deny that. <laughs> to not express those feelings out aloud is therefore an opportunity lost. Anytime I have opportunity of talking to anybody here, I will always tell them, thank you. It's an emotional word. And yet, the truth is that many of us do not express our love and gratitude very much at all. Even as a church community, we don't always say it enough. It is not that we don't love one another. No, it is not that we don't appreciate each other and what we do for God's mission here at St. James United Church. It is just that we don't say it enough. Sometimes, uh, I don't know, maybe it's our culture. We are very, very reserved. And, uh, yeah, but I want to use this time to invite us in, the, in this spirit of thanksgiving. I thought we might ask you right now. I know we cannot move closer, to, but you can tell somebody beside you or up there, thank you for coming to the church this morning. Thank you for coming to the church this morning. I appreciate you for coming to the church this morning. Thank you for singing with us this morning. Let me now say to each one of you, thank you so much for your presence and for the many ways you have contributed to the life and mission of this church. Your time, your sharing of talents and leadership, and your contribution to both our local and national church changes life every day. And as a minister, or as a pastor, as your pastor, I very much appreciate this. Do you know, without you, we are less. I'm so grateful also to be here in ministry with all of you. Thank you. Expressing our love and gratitude in words is important and often powerful. You want to know something else? It also helps us when we, when we do thanking. Indeed, there are many recent studies that shows that focusing on our borders and expressing our gratitude regularly make us happier. 
and heavier as individuals and stronger as a community. A writer, Diana Butler Bass, in a wonderful book called Grateful, The Transformative Power of Giving Thanks, sums it up beautifully. In addition to heart health, that is, our heart will be healthy. Recently, I went for a heart stress test, and they joined so many things on my heart. And when I, I asked, when I saw those things that they joined to my heart, I appealed to the nurse and to the doctor that please take that picture for me. And they took it for me. And I went up and I showed it to my wife. She said, ah? But at the end, they told me that, ah, Reverend Ben, you are healthy. I said, praise the Lord. Our heart will be healthy. Gratitude can also be linked to emotional well being. It lowers levels of anxiety and depression. It decreases panic attacks and phobia. It reduces risk of alcoholism and substance abuse and longevity. Yes, grateful people live longer. Research has found that thankful people live happier. They live happier lives as well. So bottom line is, don't be shy. Always say thank you. And always say what? I can't hear you. Always say what? Thank you. Always say what? Thank you. And not say it often. While focusing on our gratitude and expressing it aloud is necessary. We all know, however, that it doesn't end there. Say it doesn't end there. Love and gratitude must also be lived out expressing it in our actions. We all know of cases where someone says, I love you so much, but their actions are not consistent with their words. They give a mixed message. And we also know that when messages are missed, people believe our actions over what? Over our words. So it is the key to both say it and what? Leave it. When you say it, you must do what? So this morning, how do we express our love and gratitude to God? We can say it aloud, and we do. Regularly through prayer, storytelling, singing. Indeed, when you think of it, our worship services are half full of words of thanksgiving. But what about our actions? How do we show God? How do we show God thanks and love? For instance, when we have those incredible moments of thankfulness, when our hearts are overflowing with gratefulness and praise, what can we do to express our love and gratitude to God? This morning, we have sung, Oh, somebody, tell him that you love him. Lift your hands together and praise the Lord. That is one. But what other ways can we? express our love and gratitude to God. Actually, Jesus has something to say about that. When asked once what God expected of a believer, he said in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 and 39, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And verse 39, here it comes. Love your neighbor as what? You are not talking to me, church. Please talk. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Are you aware that neither of these two commands were new to Jesus' listeners? What was new was the way Jesus linked the two. In essence, saying to people, when you want to express your love to God, then love another. Love your neighbor. Want to express sincere gratitude to God? All that God has done for you. Then reach out and care for all those God loves. That is all. Reach out and do what? And care for all that God loves. That is all. If you want to show God that you love him, reach out and 
care for everyone that God loves. In today's lesson, let's turn to this lesson. From the John Gospel, we get a similar message. Jesus is speaking to Peter. It is after the resurrection. Jesus is about to leave the heart. And he wants to ensure that the disciples understand their mission. It is so important. Jesus asks Peter, not once, not twice, but how many times? Three times. Three times. He asks Peter, do you love me? And each time, Peter says aloud, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus wants Peter to show him and says, feed my lamb, tend my sheep. The third time, Jesus told Peter, feed my, my sheep. In other words, if Peter wants to express his love for Jesus, he should do what? He should show him and love those whom Jesus loves. At this point, Peter was fishing. Jesus called him back. Do you love me? I love you. How do I know? Feed my sheep. You may recall that it wasn't so long before today's story that Peter was similarly asked about his relationship with Jesus. That night, a little girl asked Peter, you are one of them. What did he say? I never know him. I, I can swear. God, God hears what I'm saying. I never meet him at any time. A woman met him and said, you are part of them. What did Peter say? He said, me? Part of those guys at all over my dead body. I've never been part of them. The third time. And what happened? The cock crowed. How many times? Three times. But at this time, Jesus never left Peter alone. He brought him back. He restored him. He charged him. Do you love my sheep? Feed them. Do you love my sheep? Tend them. Do you love me? Feed my lambs. Oh, what a restoration. What a charge. What a challenge. Is this not speaking to us today? How do we show love to one another? How do we show love to our friends? Those that will pick in their, in their mistakes, those that have offended us. Hmm. But Jesus, he never broke that relationship with Peter. It was that night when Jesus was arrested. Then, also three times, he denied, Peter denied Jesus, knowing Jesus. But in the day after crucifixion, we can imagine what this will have played, that this will have played heavy on Peter's heart after he denied Jesus. Jesus was crucified. But after crucifixion, what will happen to Peter? His heart was heavy. No, Jesus never leave him there. But here is Jesus giving Peter a path for what? For healing and what? Up and up for him to get it right. To proclaim that not only does he know Jesus, but he also what? He loves him. In the days to come, we we'll all see what happened to him. Many people will come to faith in God, not just because of Peter's word, but because of how he lived out his life. How he lived for the moment. His actions speak louder. Uh, and it reinforces it with what? With his word. Eventually, Peter will give up his very life for the sake of Jesus. Now, that is speaking loudly through what? Through your action. Let me offer one final point. When we live our, our love as we speak it, we are following what? God's example. 
God tells us and then shows us. That is the central message of the story of Jesus. For a Libra or modern mind, it is unbelievable to imagine God coming to this earth as a human being, taking on our limitations, our pain, our sufferings, our doubt, and our fears, coming to the world to tell us, but most importantly, to show us. He preached, he healed people, and at the end, what did he do? He gave up his life. He died a criminal death. He showed us his love for us. Not was he telling us, but he's also the word. He's also show us. And incredible life, life transforming and never ending. God in Jesus came to show us that which God has been repeating for centuries through the Hebrew leaders and prophets. We are loved, and God is what is with us, no matter what we have done, no matter whom we have, no matter our past sin. Jesus came down to show us that we have been what? We have been forgiven. Through what? Through his death on the cross of Calvary. Today, he is changing our very lives forever with what? with his love. My friends today, God's love still needs flesh and bone. God's love is not in the head. To show God's love, who are God going to use? He's going to use us. He still needs flesh and bone. Today, God still needs people to show others God's love and care. Indeed, as Christ followers in our time and place, we are called in grateful response to God's love and abundance to be nothing less than the hands and feet of God, making a difference in the lives of others, particular, particularly those in need for Jesus' sake. God promises to be with us in this endeavor through the Holy Spirit. God promises to help us show this love, God's love. In the case of Peter, Jesus calling Tend my sheep. Feed my lamb. Feed my lamb. He left everything. And he what? He was preaching. And when you read Acts chapter 1, what happened? The person that denied Jesus three times, he stood up, unprepared sermon, and at a time, over how many? Over 3,000 gave their lives to who? To God. Because of what? Because of the love of Peter. We are not only to say it, but we are to show it. We are not only to tell others, I love you, but we are to put it into action. In our church, we have so many ways that we have put together to show people that we love them. One of it have actually told us during the announcement, calling others, how are you doing? Do you know, when you call somebody who needs somebody to talk to, do you know it's very, very important? Sometimes I may have arranged that I want to call about 10 or five people a day, but sometimes, I'll be stuck with one or two. They have something to say. And we are going one hour, two hours on the phone. You'll be surprised. People want to do what? Want to pour out their heart, especially at this time. So, so many people have, have not been able to visit others. Let's call somebody. Do what? Call. Just. It is very simple, but it is very, very important. In science, there's something that they call neuroscience. It deals with our brain. It is what helps us to remember what happened to us. 
neuroscience. And there's something they call psychoscience. It is what helps us to retune what happened to us. When you call somebody that something bad has happened to, and you say, how are you doing? Because what is, what is in his or her brain is what has happened. But because you are now telling another thing, this, another thing that is happening in his head will do what? Will help him to attune it to what? Rightly. So when you call somebody, it's very, very what? It's very, very bad. Apart from calling, we have to show it. Every first Sunday of the month, we have to do what? Bring something for the food bank. It's very, very important. Do you know, when you care for one person, you change. We are going to see it in the min minute for mission this morning. Just one person, it affects how many lives? A thousand lives. Not only that, as a church, every Friday I'm always in the hospital. Oh my God. Let me leave it there. We have so many things that we are doing. Let me close it with a story. There is a wonderful story told of a little girl walking from home church one Sunday with her mom. At one point, the little girl turns to her mother and says, Mommy, Reverend Adekunle Simon this morning confused me. The mother said, Oh, what is that? The little girl replied, Well, Reverend Adekunle said that God is bigger than we have. Is that true? The mother replied, Yes, honey, that is true. And Reverend Adekunle said that God lives in us. Is that true, mommy? The mother replied, Yes, that is also true. Well, said the little girl, if God is bigger than us and lives in us, wouldn't God show true? Will everybody not see God in us today as we start this series on stewardship? I want us to take time to reflect on God's love, God's grace, and God's abundant blessing in our individual lives and in the life of this church. Today, in the spirit of thanksgiving, we will pause to give God thanks for all that we have and all that we have. But let us also take this day and the days ahead to show God our gratitude by letting God shine through us to bless others. Friends, may God's spirit be with each of us and with our congregation as we seek to grow our faith, our love, and our impact as this COVID is coming to an end. As we seek to touch our community, to touch our church members, to touch all our friends, the world is waiting. God's people need us. And what can we give? May God bless us through our words, and may God's people be blessed through our actions. Amen. Please go out and show the love of God to others. Show the love of God to our church members, to our friends, to our family, and to everyone that come in contact with us. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you this morning because you are God. We thank you because there is none like you. There is a question for us to ponder this morning. What am I showing? What do I, what do I need to show? And what is God? calling me to do at this time. Lord, give us the grace when it is easy and when it is not easy, when it is convenient and when it is not convenient to show your love to others.
Send us forth as your hands and feet. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let me invite Reverend Julie for special numbers. you know, 
Kumasi house is just like a sanctuary house in Worcester Field. And our mission and service offering, giving, goes to this. When you change one life, you change one million lives. This morning, I want to invite us. I want to first thank us for our giving. Oh, I must tell you that I'm surprised, I'm amazed by how, as a church, we have been giving. I want to thank you for that. And this morning, I want to invite us, if you have planned, prepared to give your offering this morning, we have three buckets, one at the front, one at the exit, and one at the entrance of the church. So please, let us give as we have proposed uh, this morning. Apart from that, you can, apart from our usual giving, maybe by e-transfer, maybe by PAR, we can plan for legacy giving. During the week, we receive a legacy giving from one of our uh, uh, sisters that just passed away, a legacy giving of $15,000 from our estate. In fact, when we received that, that news, it was touching to us because we'll keep on remembering, remembering her. So you two can plan that. We had of everything fund that was given to the church. Yeah, and some other people have talked to me that, well, we're, we have this in plan, we have this in plan. You too can do that. Our usual Sunday's giving is many, is very appreciated. So if you have planned to do that this morning, please do. If you have not planned to do that, please, I want to invite us to please let us think about donating to the church. Thank you. And now let us prepare for our prayers of the people and of our church. Good morning, everyone. Um, we'll be taking the prayers of the Hopa Tree together. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the gift that is life, for the challenging season, for the tiny seed that is in your holy ministry become life-sustaining food, cleanse air, beauty to behold, and life itself. Accept this gift we bring and accept us that together we might be able to show your love and transform the lives of your people. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the gift of family, friends, and community. Those who know us so well that they know when to hold our hands and when to let go. We thank you for those people who journey with us in our times of joy and in times of sorrow. Dear Jesus, we thank you for, for holding us in troubling times. We pray for those who are journeying through illness, awaiting medical diagnosis, those with life-threatening and degenerative diseases. We pray for all who are sick. Everyone in problem. Those seeking the face of God for one thing or the other. We know that we do not join in alone, but that you are always with us. Dear Jesus, we pray for writing your law upon our hearts so that we are called to seek justice and to love kindness. Thank you for moving us to action and challenging us to be your hands and feet in a world so desperately in need of healing. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the gift of life, love and compassion, and challenge. Help us to know that each small individual action together with another can make a difference to the world and make 
a world of difference. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Lord Jesus, we lift these people before you in prayers. David Richards, Donald and David Gilson, Trevor Nelson, Isabel Nointing, Laurie Young, Lawrence Edion, Steve Powell, Ken Nicholas, Sharon, Katarina Lenahan, and Suzette McDonald. Let us join our voices together as we pray the prayers our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil, for thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That is my wife. For some of us that doesn't know her, that is my sweetheart. Wow. Thank you, my sweetheart, for taking the prayers this morning. Our closing hymn is taken from more voices this morning. And it is number 169. 169. And please, you may stand as we are here. love in the world. We go in faith and in hope to feed Christ's sheep 
and care for Christ's land. Go in peace, and may the love of God embrace us, the compassion of Christ challenge us, and the Holy Spirit guide us. Amen. Amen. And our post load is Voices United, number three, 639. One more step along the word I go. Thank you very much for worshiping with us.